everyone. Today we will have the next module of the course role of craft and technology in interior architecture. This is module 2 and it deals with craft, what is its definition, what do we understand from this term and what are the varied perspectives on art and craft. Are they the same things, they are different, let us just see. So, the contents for this module today, we start with craft meaning, definition, understanding, varied perspectives on art and craft, craft, classification and examples. Then we will traverse a little bit through the history of Indian crafts. We will also have a look at craft maps of India. Then few movements in history of arts and craft, what are the current challenges that we face and then few references. So, what is craft? It is not a very easy term and it is not yet difficult, it is just that sometimes we do not observe or we do not put things around us in proper words. So, a lot of people use art for craft, craft for art and a lot of us might not even know what exactly craft is all about. So, to understand this term because it is very important for a course like this where one of the nodes is craft and technology, we need to understand what is craft. Now, this is one infographic that I had prepared. If we see this closely and I will stay on this slide for a while so that everybody can have a closer look. This clearly shows that craft has been the center of many socially driven initiatives. It has enjoyed an extraordinary locus when we talk about the fields of design, visual art, architecture. So, if we see craft, craft uh, could be associated to so many things which surround us. It is something which is very universal, yet at the same time it could be something which is very personal. It is very multidisciplinary. Um, it could believe to the elite, it could belong to the elite, it could belong to the popular. Uh, when we talk about craft, we connote it to arts and crafts movement that have happened in history. It also has some link with the interior architecture that we are going to see throughout this course. When we talk about craft, there is also a mention of indigenous, locality. There is very much a talk about materials and skills and craft persons. Then uh, there is something called as creative economy, maybe we will just come across it later. It also uh, makes us talk about or believe in ethnicity, morality, domesticity. Craft is about communication, storytelling, process, traditions, vernacular. So, if we see over here, we could understand the kind of challenge one would face while talking about craft, trying to define it, describe it. If there is so much that surrounds us like almost everything that has a mention of craft to it. So, we will slowly unfold and see what many people have defined it as, how do they perceive it as, what kind of um, activities do we associate to when we talk about craft. So, let us just unfold all of it. Going by an initial definition which is given by the director at the Craft Council UK, an initial definition of craft means objects made for use, like very simply the objects made for use, such as a cup for drinking or a chair for sitting. Before commercial manufacturing, these objects were made by hand and the techniques for creating them were learned through family or community traditions or occasionally through an apprenticeship program with master artisans. So, usually these traditions and these learning methods and skills, they were transferred from one generation to another and it was like a family tradition. Craft also refers to the manual dexterity and artistic skill which is required in working with materials and in creating objects that can be ornamental or functional or both. So, it usually involves materials, making, and it involves uh, community traditions that are transferred from generation to generation and it involves a utility, it is made for use. So, 
craft could be referred to as making and the processes which are involved during making of something. It is a very wide term and like I was discussing a few slides ago, it just encompasses almost everything that surrounds us. Another definition which is given by Dr. Nicola Houghton, craft is the development of practical, aesthetic and thinking skills and of creativity through the conception and production of individual works and an in-depth engagement with materials. Here also what we see in-depth engagement with materials. So, material is a very very primary focus when we talk about craft and related to materials we would talk about skills and these skills belong to a certain guild of people, some craft persons, some artisans. Another definition, craft can be considered as the designing and making of individual artifacts, encouraging the development of intellectual, creative and practical skills, visual sensitivity and a working knowledge of tools and materials. So, again we see another word tools. So, when we talk about materials and skills, there will be tools, there will be techniques, the entire process. So, this vocabulary we have to build on, we have to stay with this and we have to see how everything is encompassed within this umbrella term called craft. This uh, definition or understanding or description is given by Making Connections Toolkit, Makers and ma Making. Few other perspectives or few other definitions, uh, we can just have a glimpse through these also. Many try to define craft through materials or disciplines or a combination of the two. For example, wood, jewelry, furniture, weaving, ceramics. So, if I talk about wood, that is a material, if I talk about furniture, furniture craft. So, material and craft. Same way, if I talk about material, stone is a material, and carving could be a stone craft. For some, craft is about making objects predominantly by hand. So, we also have this word now handmade, where functional and aesthetic considerations are equally important. So, while it is aesthetically pleasing, visually appealing, it also has a function to cater to. That is what most of the people tell about craft and how it distinguishes it from other artistic activities. Let us go ahead. Now, let us just talk in the context of India. So, our own Vastu Sutra Upanishad, how does it tell about Indian crafts? In India, unlike in Europe, no principal distinction is made between fine arts and practical crafts. All handiwork that is manufactured is shilp. So, we see this word shilp which comes from Indian history, it is there in our scriptures and epics. From painting, sculpture, architecture to pottery, weaving, mechanics, engineering, metal casting, leather work and perfumery. The term is also applicable to dance, music, poetry, drama and medicine. With respect to Indian stone craft, Shilp covers the fine arts through sculpture, architecture, design and production methods. The latter includes the skills of carving and masonry. This proves that the evolution of Indian craft, art and construction were connected. Now, this is very important. This tells us that Indian craft, art, construction were very interconnected. In fact, architecture, interior architecture, interior design, all of these are relatively very new disciplines. Earlier, there was no subject or a field like this. Everything was like a shilp. Uh, we depended on our shilp cars, we depended, uh, dependent on sthapatis. So, um, those were the different kinds of methods and different kinds of sciences that were involved, but the same which we have now transcended into the modern disciplines of architecture, interior architecture, design, interior design. Continuing with this, because of the traditional caste system, it translated into a system of guilds. 
such a fundamental association between architecture and the fine arts led to the design and sculptural ornamentation of traditional monuments. The fusion with the Islamic tradition further strengthened this language. Now is craft and art, are they same, are they different, are they similar? When do we use a term called art, when do we use a term called craft? What are the hairline differences between them or are they completely two different uh, ways of uh, describing some activities or processes? Let us just dwell into that. So, one definition or an understanding that is given by Howard Becker, art and craft are two contrasting kinds of aesthetic, work organization and work ideology differing in their emphasis on the standards of utility, skill and beauty. Now, this is important. Uh, he talks that both of these terminologies differ quite a lot as far as their standards of utility, skill and beauty are considered. Activities organized as craft can become art when members of established art worlds take over their media, techniques and organization. So, he further also tells when can craft become art. We still are very away from understanding the primary difference between the two. So, let us just delve more into this discussion and let us see what art and craft are all about. So, art is the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination typically in a visual form such as painting or sculpture producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. This is uh, one understanding uh, on art that it is majorly an expression, it deals with imagination, it is typically in a visual form, it also connects to us emotionally. So, let us see where are we moving ahead with this. There is another definition um, I could not trace uh, who has said this, it is pr probably anonymous. Art is a diverse range of human activities and the products of those activities. Art has had a great number of different functions throughout its history, making its purpose difficult to abstract or quantify to any single concept. So, uh, this scholar does recognize the purpose and the utility attached to art, but also says that it is very difficult to quantify or measure it. This is one very interesting slide and I find it very fascinating. Here if we see this, we see a chimpanzee, we see he is cracking a nut with the stone. So, what I am trying to say here is that mostly all the craft have emerged out of needs. We needed something and we had to make something, we had to create something and we involved certain materials, certain skill sets and hence it led to the creation. So, craft emerged out of needs and most of the um, scholars and the people who have immense knowledge in this field of craft, they say that craft is something that emerged out of needs, whether it is to do with Indian uh, scenario or it is to deal with other places globally, but this is one unanimous understanding about craft that it emerges out of needs. So, starting from cracking nuts to creating uh, stone tools for hunting to creating shelter and then ornamentation in the form of carving slowly and slowly as our needs increased, as our skill sets developed, we started with the material and then we explored it in various different forms and different dimensions in different walks of our lives. Now about art, this is a very famous painting from a very famous artist Jamini Roy and uh, again here for art most of the scholars and most of the literature emphasizes that art emerges more like expression from personal experiences and not so much out of need or utility. So, it is usually non-utilitarian. But all these perspectives and definitions and discussions that we are going through 
uh, there is lot of debate still going on and lot of people still think that art and craft have very blur boundaries and they are more or less same at the same time most of the people and the scholars believe that the boundaries have to be maintained and art cannot be craft and vice versa so we can probably explore through all the modules and try to develop an understanding for our own selves as we see all these uh, perspectives images explanations and the discourses that we have throughout now i would just leave those perspectives about art and craft till that point because as i said it could be very challenging and confusing to have a very clear understanding and especially after this module itself when we had a very little discussion about it so let's just explore across through other modules also so we will focus now on varied classification of the word called craft and certain examples that will help us understand what basically craft is about where all is it applied these are the varied classification now just a few slides ago we were discussing that most of the times crafts are de defined through varied materials so uh, if you see this slide lot of the crafts that are described over here or mentioned over here they are basically defined through materials itself which is a very practical way of classifying craft because as we had been discussing that there is always a role of a material and then the associated skills and the tools and the techniques so it becomes very easier to understand craft in terms of the material so if we see over here again this is not a very exhaustive list but lot many of the crafts which have been described over here ceramics and glass crafts fiber and textile crafts flower crafts leather work mixed media needle work there are paper crafts origami we have wood crafts furniture crafts within wood also there are n number of craft techniques there is parquetry there is marquetry there is carving there is inlay then there are stone crafts again within stone crafts there is whole lot of set of techniques of uh, stone inlay stone carving then we have metal crafts bell making and so many others we could also uh, classify craft in terms of their purpose function or connotation so we could have a classification like ritualistic crafts hobby crafts votive crafts so if uh, we talk about terracotta especially it was actually practiced as a votive craft later it became something utilitarian and then it extended into the domain of interior architecture so then we have utilitarian crafts now this is i this classification is borrowed from literature but here again we wonder when we say that craft is something which is made for use which has a utility do we really need to put this specific classification like utilitarian crafts so we can question this everything doesn't have to be very sacrosanct rural crafts urban crafts folk crafts decorative crafts ornamental crafts so there is a long list and as we discover and learn more each one of us could add to this list and we can have our own understanding about the topic and the discipline these are some examples of the stone crafts and these are very historical monuments which are very famous in indian history and we see lot of sculptures and carving whether it's a step well or it's a minakshi temple which is in the south or we have the sculptures of khajuraho we see very exquisite works over here lot of skills lot of hand work involved lot of sense of scale and proportion and aesthetic so all of this here which is done by hand and which has certain meaning and utility all these monuments the examples that we see in the history of architecture of india they are still talked about we still learn from them and the material the technique the skills that were used in those times there is so much to carry forward this is another slide that talks about the wood carvings in uttarakhand so here if we see the carvings Now Uttarakhand is uh, known for its timber, and there are varied locally available woods like tun, thunair, which really allow for very very exquisite carving. 
Now, again, this is a slide that talks about the textile craft of Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand is known for its textiles also, especially Bageshwar. And like this is a setup in Almora, lot of textile work happening, the looms over here. These are some craft forms which are from City Palace Udaipur. So we see the work here which is done by stained glass. There is a play of light and colour. We see here the paintings which are done on the ceiling, which were done in those times with natural dyes. So a lot of sensitivity involved and connection with the nature, celebrating the forms that we see around us. This one is a very famous building in Agra. It's called Radha Swami Swamad. And here there's exquisite stone crafts. It's remarkable work that has been done. So on the left side, we see a lot of stone carving. And we see motifs from the nature which are done in so much detail that it appears almost real and 3D. And here on the right side, we see the stone inlay. So, also the color, so there is green marble, there is white marble, there is red marble and the way it is put together and contrasted. So, again inlay work is another craft, stone craft. So, the examples were very uh, few and simple. When we go to the next module, then we will establish more interrelationship, we will see more on the craft forms, how are they. Uh, done, what is the process involved and how do they have an interrelationship with the, the interior architecture, what is the role of craft and technology in creating of interior architecture. Now let us have some nostalgia and traverse through the history of Indian crafts. So when we talk about Indian crafts, it is inevitable that there is a mention of Shilpa Shastra. Shilpa Shastra literally means the science of Shilpa arts and crafts. It is an ancient umbrella term for numerous Hindu texts that describe arts, crafts and their design rules, principles and standards. In the context of temple design, Shilpa Shastras were manuals for sculpture and Hindu iconography, prescribing among other things the proportions of a sculptured figure, composition, principles, meaning as well as the rules of architecture. There were 64 techniques which were mentioned in our Shilpa Shastra. It is so amazing to see the mention of such techniques. 64 techniques for such arts or crafts, sometimes called Baha'i Kala or external or practical arts, are traditionally enumerated, including carpentry, architecture, jewelry, farriery, acting, dancing, music, medicine, poetry, etc. Besides 64 Abhyantra Kala or secret arts, which include mostly erotic arts, while Shilp and Vastu Shastras are related, Shilp Shastras deal with arts and crafts such as forming statues, icons, stone murals, painting, carpentry, pottery, jewelry, dyeing, textiles, and others. Vastu Shastras deal with building architecture. So there is so much mention of all the different craft forms, art forms that we see in our Shilpa Shastras and it's very fascinating to look back upon them and learn from them. If we see through our history, there is lot of mention and predominance of varied craft forms. For example, if we see the Kushan period, we see there is a mention of sculptures, jewellery, leather, metal work. Then there is medieval period where we see a lot of mention of pottery, there is weaving, a lot of metal craft came into picture. Gupta period of course came to be known as the golden age of arts and crafts and we see a lot of mention of handicrafts, varied forms of paintings, there is inlay work, glass engraving, then uh, enameling. Mauryan period saw another range of varied kind of craft forms, there were sculptures, in fact, more than 84,000 stupas were milled. There was carving, there was relief work. In this Valley civilization, we see a lot of mention again, pottery, sculpture, stone, terracotta, jewelry was also there, which we see a lot in Indus Valley civilization. Vedic age had another set of craft forms. So this gives us a glimpse that India has been very rich in varied craft forms. This is one document which is 
given by a very famous Stella Kramerich and then she talks about treatises on Shilpa Shastras and how in our scriptures and literature there is a lot of mention of art and craft forms. So, if we see over here Natya Shastra, it talks about music and crafts in 2nd century North India. Then we have uh, Vastu Vidya, it talks about sculpture, icons, painting, minor arts and crafts. Then there is a mention of uh, Ratna Shastra, then uh, Ratna Sangraha, which talks about jewelry, and there are varied kinds of treatises which will tell us that there were so many different kinds of craft forms that. India had been very rich in some, many of them originated here, few were uh, borrowed, few were a result of uh, intermingling and invasions. So, uh, I will not discuss in detail, but very quickly I will show the uh, very interesting craft forms of India. This is one map, this one talks about the handloom clusters, this talks about the handicrafts. This is the textiles map of India. They are so exquisite and a huge range. So, visually we get to know about them. These are some craft maps which are developed by Jaya Jaitli ji and she has done a remarkable job. They are beautiful. So, to end I would just like to quote, craft in India is not simply about a mechanical process, an end product and marketability. In fact, it has deeper meanings and associations which are influenced by backdrop narratives of spirituality, religion and everyday life and I have paraphrased this uh, quote. These are some references, this will be very helpful for all of you to go through this module in detail. Thank you.